What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Kirby Brothers Podcast. I'm your host, Tanner Kirby, alongside my friend, Keaton Kirby. Keaton, how are you doing today, brother? Good. How about you? Doing good. Doing good, brother. I'm uh, just sitting around the house. You know, the coronavirus and everything's going crazy in the world. Uh, you're spraying for ticks, apparently. <laughs> well, mainly ants, but I guess the critters are trying to get in the house. So. Yeah, we it's were that time of year. We were talking before the podcast even started, and we know that the true reason that the coronavirus actually started is because these damn ticks, these ticks wanted to take over. It's true. <laughs> I, don't doubt, I don't doubt it. I don't doubt it either, man. Uh, but we started this, we wanted to do a podcast for so long because we love gaming, we love everything about it, we love, uh, I'm a PlayStation guy myself, You're you lean more Microsoft, don't you? Uh, I do everything gaming. You do everything. But do yeah. you do PC Except like one of those nerds? I don't do PC or VR, really. Actually, I take that back. I got VR, but I got the PlayStation VR. So I'm like yeah. the discounted VR, you know, not the fully committed to it. I can't play Half-Life <laughs> Alex, which, you know, disappoints the shit out of me because that game looks awesome. Yeah. Um, it's one of the few things. I, I What is it? The Quest one that's by Facebook? You yeah, can actually where it's, it's buy got that. no wires and stuff. Yeah, but you actually have to, I think, if you use that union, I'm going to be completely wrong on this one. You still have to have some kind of PC to run it because of how, I guess, demanding that game is. Yeah, it's so super the full, demanding. Yeah, there's no fully wireless one that can run that game because if that was the case, then I would have probably bought that one by now so I can you know, try that, do some Beat Saber. Well, dude, I love Beat Saber. Beat Saber's great. <laughs> I, but, you know, once since this coronavirus started, you know, we're all stuck in our houses and everything. I'm really like I. The thing about the PlayStation VR is you have to hook it up, and it takes forever to hook up because you've got all these different wires, all these different things, and then it takes up a lot of room in whatever room you're in, and you have to have a big open floor plan basically so you can set it up. And <laughs> I have got mine, and I really want to start playing RE7 again okay. in VR. Because that game's scary as shit. And you know what? I'm stuck in the house. So this will be the first time I'm out of the house in a virtual world. <laughs> <laughs> Running away from murderers. So, That's I mean, I'm getting my exercise in. <laughs> right? Yeah. I'm getting my exercise in. I mean, I could pretend that this is what the world's going to turn to when Resident Evil actually starts. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and I'm going to have to pop some cap in some zombies. But... Uh, <laughs> Well, speaking know. of that, I mean, when we first started this conversation and about having a podcast, we didn't really know yeah. what how we were going to dive into it. So it's just going to be kind of open ended to begin with in the whole state of gaming. And it's kind of funny because just in that conversation, if we segued into so many things we could talk about, which was the Resident Evil 3 remake, which is popping cap and some zombies. Right. And then the new rumor for Resident Evil 8 slash Resident Evil Village. Yeah, from my understanding, isn't Resident Evil Village going to be. It's more, what is it, first person, like Resident Evil 7, right? From what I've, the rumors that are out there and that I've read, yes. Gotcha. I've heard Resident but, Evil 3 has not been getting good reviews either. Have you been playing that yet? I have played Resident Evil 3. Um, I, okay, so just to get everything off, I have an Xbox, PlayStation, it. Nintendo, um, all the new consoles, Xbox, they got the X, they got the Pro, Switch, hopefully, you know, this come this year, things don't really... You know, I guess dampen the excitement of console releases and supply chains and all that good logistics doesn't get backed up. Hopefully, I'll have an X this year and a P or X, a Series X. Let me say that, and then hopefully the PS5 as well this year too. Um, if I have to choose one at launch, it's going to be kind of interesting. I'm probably going to have to go with Xbox just because I have more of a think... backwards catalog and I have so many games that are going to be, yep. I guess, smartly delivered. From my understanding, exactly. What you're and you're not going to have you're not going to have as big of an investment because it's already going to yep. be there, basically. See, man, like here's another segue because we were just talking about all the stuff that's going on because just this past week they mentioned um, Cyberpunk and they said that more than likely it's going to come out on release date. Um, that's a whole other segue about release dates and with like Sony did with Last of Us 2. Man, we got so much to talk about. But <laughs> Xbox already came out and said, or excuse me, CG Project, CD Project Red said that their Cyberpunk for the Xbox is going to get that free upgrade automatically mm -hmm. on Series X. Whereas PlayStation really hasn't said anything or they couldn't elaborate on it. 
Yeah. Um, except for the fact there's will be two different SKUs. Now that doesn't mean if you own it on one system, you're not going to get it for the free one. Cause maybe it's just Sony's not, you know, capable of yeah, talking you about can that still, quite yet. You can probably still get the normal version, but probably not get the upgraded version was my understanding yeah. of it. So, but what's weird about it is, and I was thinking about this as well, cause we were talking about this with cyberpunk. So the next Xbox, if you go into Walmart, mm-hmm. are there casings for at least the first two years, just going to say Xbox? Because like, it say, sounds like everything well, that you buy on the Xbox is going to be smart delivered to the Series X. You know what I'm saying? Like, and vice versa. Point. I think it'll still be similar. I think that the boxes will be... So like for the Xbox, it would be... Uh, I think you'd still have the Xbox Series X boxes. And I think you would have an Xbox One box just for the people that still have it. And you know, gotcha. because of this coronavirus and everything, I don't see people upgrading that quick. I don't know, man. I think if everything is well, hopefully our economy is booming again in June, July. Everybody's I do in the think, car. and I as do you noticed, that yeah. the Series X will come out, but the PlayStation will get delayed. Mm. And I with think the Last of Us Two being pushed, I, the Last of Us Two being pushed, the um, Iron Man VR game, which I was excited for, that was supposed to come out in February, so that was already delayed. Well, they, weren't they both supposed to come out in February? Yes. Yeah, so they both got delayed. One well, got... Go ahead. I believe Last of Us 2 is done. Yeah, it's like, done. Actually, it's just they can't manufacture it, right? Right. And I think, because they were talking about after the CD, CD Project Red, I was reading a bunch of stuff on this. And I'm assuming Sony, because of how much, like, because they're a hardware manufacturer, mm-hmm. they probably have quite a bit of contracts or something signed up with a bunch of these brick and mortar stores. And actually have to have, I guess, you know, you know shelf-facing product, if that makes any sense. So yeah. I don't think maybe they're able to turn around and actually do a, let's say, fully digital release where, like, CD Projekt Red, and also coming from a PC background with, you know, the Witcher 1, Witcher 2 before they got in the console ground, I don't right. think it bothers them. I think if we still have this problem, what which don't get me wrong. What country is CJ, CD Projekt Red in? Do you know? I, I think it's Poland. I could be wrong. I don't know how Poland's doing with the coronavirus or anything like that. So it could be that their manufacturing is just not affected, too. Well, I'm assuming the manufacturing is probably all in China. <laughs> for everybody. Yeah, that's true. Know, that's like, true. For Blu-rays um, and stuff like that, you're right. Because the CD, are they self-publishing? Uh, I'm not sure. Let's I mean, go ahead and Google have, it. I'm it right seems like they have people. enough money. I'm sure they probably could. I'm sure they have plenty of money from The Witcher and other things. Yeah, but that was just kind of the conversation they're having with Last of Us 2 saying, you know, why not? And I think that's probably the main reason is because they're trying to hit so many, I guess, obligations they've had with even the stores that have been pushing advertising for them, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Um, so I think The Last of Us 2 is kind of in a weird position where even if it is ready, you know, digitally, that they can't do it. Um, right. And then on top of that, though, When's Ghost going to be delayed? That was the next question. I I think that's just going to turn into a PS5 launch title, in all honesty. Well, I don't think the um, PlayStation is going to launch. Like you said, if it launches this year, man, that game will be ready because that's their... What the only game they released was um, Infamous... The first Infamous, right? And it was pretty much the six-month window when it first released. Are you talking about uh, Infamous Second Son? Uh, Yes, talking about Second yeah. Punch. Yeah. Uh, yeah, for Infamous Second Son, they came out uh, probably the third month, I think, of PS4 was when I picked yeah. that up. So, so I just think it's it wasn't a Sucker launch Punches. title, but it was in the yeah. launch window. You can't tell me. Now, we can have a let's kind of dive into that maybe a little later. We were, yeah, let's talk about what we think the PlayStation because we can just have a all encompassing, is what I was thinking, pretty quick conversation. But let me go back before we forget about what we were talking about <laughs> Resident <laughs> Evil 3. <laughs> I actually right. um, enjoy it quite a bit. And I did get it on the Xbox One X. And right. it did have frame rate issues. And I'm only played about an hour and a half of it. And it did have... And it was really weird because it was only the zombies. So... What do you mean only the zombies? So like, the environment, your character movement, none of that was a problem on the Xbox One X. Because this was a, it was a thing. Because PlayStation, I think, base and PS4... Pro, of course, both ran it better than the X, which is kind of odd because it's the best. And it's very odd for console it's wise, opposite, isn't yeah. It? So it was kind of strange, and the zombies kind of moved like they were doing the robot dance, if that makes any sense. So they, they were, were just, 
static so, kind of moving. Well, it, very jittery. Like it didn't seem like a natural because if you if you play Resident Evil two and three, the remakes, the zombies right. kind of move like a very hammered, drunk redneck guy. You know what I'm saying? Right. So right. they're freaking. But it was but it was very smooth. <laughs> Um, you couldn't really predict the movements that much, like I say, because they were kind of sporadic to an extent, but they weren't like jittery. So with right. the, pr- I guess the problems with the the Xbox One X version, like I said, it was extremely like I don't know jittery. Like it was just really weird, and you can tell that the zombies. And it was was that was the weird thing about it because that was the only thing that I had problems that was framing out because it was like everything else was running sixty frames per second, but the job the zombies were running like thirty. If that would make any sense. Right. So it seemed like they were just like, I don't know how to explain it too much. I know I've probably butchered that. But with that being said, they did release an update, I think, yesterday, and they fixed that. To and fix now that. It's, ru- it's running at like 1640p, I think. But with does that almost help the lot issues that people were having with the game only lasting so, like three to four hours? This is um, the jading, jadedness of gamers, I guess you would say. And this is kind of my mindset changing on a bunch of these things. So I haven't beat the game yet. Right. Um, yes, I've heard some gamers beat it within five, four hours. I've heard the average I've seen is around six to eight, you know, if you take your time, do everything. And then I've seen, um, some players, like I was one of the guys on IGN who's playing the game. He did it in 12. Um, truthfully, if you're worried about the length of this game and you're thinking about, you know, this is what's, you know, holding you from buying it. For, just wait a couple months, first of all. It'll probably be 40, 30 bucks. So mm-hmm. that's not a problem. But if you want to get it now, just play it on the hardest difficulty because it'll probably take you 40 hours to beat the game. Because in normal, this game is hard. And, you know, I'd be Sekiro, for instance. And it's not like nowhere near as hard as Sekiro. I'm just giving you a basis of how hard this game can be. But there's times where you're running from, and this is just when the first two hours of the game, I'm running from, ne- uh, what's his name, Nemesis. Yeah, I have six rounds, two grenades, one shotgun round, and there's about at least anywhere between point A to B and B is where I'm trying to get to. Eight, let's say normal, eight to ten normal zombies with Nemesis chasing you. Oh my god! And so it's not an easy game on normal. And my brother's actually playing it as well, and he actually put it on easy with the assisted mode. Because, How old's your uh, brother again? He is thirty-one. 32. Oh, I'm just kidding. I thought 32. you had a younger brother, though. I do have a younger brother. He's not. Okay, that's the one I was thinking of. I was like, that that's too. impressive if he's playing. <laughs> but my older like, brother. But that scares yeah. the shit out of him. <laughs> he put it on the assisted mode because he was having that much trouble with it. Um, so if you put it on hard, I can guarantee you, just from the amount of deaths you're probably going to take, for an mm-hmm. average gamer, I understand there's people out there that have way better reflexes and whatever capacities of playing game than I do. But it would definitely increase your time. Um mm-hmm. What's really interesting is a bunch of the rumors that were going on prior is this was supposed to be a bundle package with Resident Evil 2. I could so see it that. Been Resident I could definitely Evil 2. see that. I kind of see that too because then they would have three I'm sure they will. You know? I mean, the engine's exactly the same, is, yeah. it, uh, is it not? Yeah. Well, I meant like before this game released. Originally, it was going to yeah. be a Resident Evil 2 and 3 like combined remake package release. Um, which, you know, if that was the case and they're just trying to get a little extra money, like... I get it. At the same time, like I know people kind of be mad about that, but dude, that RE engine is phenomenal. Resident Evil yeah, Two that, was that, a that phenomenal game, game. That game is really beautiful. But the you thing, know, and I, the thing that, uh, well, let me just ask you: What do you think compared this game to Resident Evil Two? I know you played both of them. I played the demo for two. I don't think I ever played the actual game. I thought about getting it when it was on sale around Black Friday, but I just ended up not. Or when. Um, Redbox was going out of business and they were liquidating all their games. Holy crap, I bought yeah. so much stuff. But um, <laughs> I got Call of Duty and I got uh, WWE 2K20, which that was a mistake. But what do you think that Resident Evil 3 and 2, if you had to pick the better one, which one would it be? Oh, we would definitely be 2 right now. So, yeah. Um, How many hours in are it. you again? In 3? Yeah. 2 hours in. You're 2 hours in? Okay, so not, not yeah. that far then. Yeah, and I've read that, um, and the guys that's beat it and reviewed it, they said there's a lot of you know multiple options um, post game that it allows you to do, and Resident Evil Two had that as well, like tofu mode and stuff like that. But with that being said, um, 
the odds for me to actually revisit a game after beating it because I very rarely beat games anyways. Yeah. yeah it's like zero to none. So. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame you. I don't blame you. Uh, you've also been playing what you've been playing Final Fantasy, haven't you? Yes. Uh, and I'm, it's ironic. I've had Resident Evil 3 for a whole week. I played two hours of it. I've had Final Fantasy 7 for since yesterday, and I've got 10 hours in. Oh my God. See, I've never played a Final Fantasy game. Is it so? From my under, this is a remake, right? It is of the seventh game, which was a PS one game. Correct. Okay, and then does it do like the other reboots, where it's not like tactic, like where I'm gonna pick a pick a move or pick a thing, and then I'm gonna uh, use an item or something like that? It's Correct. like. It's more it action oriented, right? right. Kind of like God of War or something. Uh, not it's. So what you're kind of alluding to is not turn based. Okay, it's not where That's everybody's what, that lined up. That was the word I was looking for. Thank you. I wanted one to say side Pokemon. Of the <laughs> yeah, well, Pokemon's <laughs> turn based too. So yeah, yeah, I wanted to say um, you know the Pokemon's <laughs> works job. <laughs> so here's a. I know I've been talking a lot on this one, but like I said, we got so much to say about gaming. Just yeah. to dive right in, like. Final Fantasy Nine. This is that was actually probably the first real like dive in a game I've ever had. Like growing up, like I played a right. lot of. At the time, now, we played like maybe Halo One split screen. We played maybe mm-hmm. you know a couple things of Jack and Dexter or something like that. The Mario games on the SNES, uh, a couple PS One stuff. But right. then my cousin actually, we bought Final Fantasy Seven at a pawn shop. My brother and I did. Because it looked really cool, dude. Like, the front of the screen is this dude holding a, or the game casing, a big old sword, you know. And you're like, right. oh, man, that looks kind of cool. And in your head, you're like, I wonder what this is about. And then you start playing it, and it's turn-based. And, you know, we were younger at the time because it came out in 97. We probably bought it in, I would say, 2000, 2001, because we got a PlayStation 1 late and a PS2 late. Yeah, that um, makes sense. So it was like, hey, you know, I'm going to try this. Well, long story short, we didn't really care much for it at at first, so I let my cousin who lives down used to live down the street. I you know loaned it to him, and yeah, I'm not that's usually kidding. what you do with those shit games. It, You're like, here, take this, and I'll <laughs> take your Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> it may, it may have not have been a year later. Like during this whole time, actually, he had a birthday. He went and got a PS2 um, and sold his old PS2 to us. And at the time, PS2 was backwards compatible, right? Um, um, with pretty much, I think all PS1 games. You know, I'll correct me if I'm wrong on that, but I think they were all CD-ROMs. So yeah, I believe it was backwards compatible. So. During this whole time, he gets this, you know, the PS2, we're all talking this, and you, you know, whatever it may be, and he keeps just talking about this game that we let him borrow, more or less, Final Fantasy VII. And we're right. like, dude, you played that, you know? And he's like, dude, this is so good. And we're like, what are you talking about? I was like, yeah, man. He's like, my clock doesn't even move now, because I think in that game, if you play 99 hours, 99 minutes, oh my like God, 99, nine, like, I think it stopped. So it didn't oh count any higher back then. And that's where his clock was at. And I was like, how have you played you know this much of this game like how like and first of all those were the few games i guess in that time like when i was a kid i had no kind of well, how do you call it i can't even think the word right now I feel idea to where you would stop <laughs> or not no not stop just idea of how much time i put into a game or how much time i was oh, willing yeah, to put true. into a game yeah that's so right. like i didn't worry about how many hours were put in a game or how many clock you know now it seems like i guess it's maybe a capitalistic nature of the society we live in everybody's kind of thinks about it as in hours in a game almost yeah. like animal cross and people are like oh man i put 150 hours in the game and for some people like knowing that 150 hours can go in that game and you're still getting joy out of it that's yep. not a mac purchase if that makes any sense yeah um but the, regardless man he played this game for this long and i was like man is it really that good and he still hasn't beat it because we were like maybe we want to play it again at this point because we've all got a little older understanding games a little more and he's like i gotta beat it first like all right well we went to one of our um, local movie rental places at the time. It was called Movie Gallery. Dude, and, um, fun story about Movie Gallery. It looks do, you hear my, do you want to hear yeah. my story about Movie Gallery? Okay, so Movie Gallery, we had one uh, where in my county. It's a small town in North Carolina. But we the Movie Gallery opens. We go to Movie Gallery. We're probably one of the first people there. Movie Gallery was expensive, by the way, Keith. I don't it know was. if you remember that. It was it freaking was. expensive. It was like yep. ten bucks, ten bucks, yep. but you'd get it for like five days, five or something nights. Like that. Yep. Yeah. Yep. 
but it was way more expensive than a flick video or a family video yep. of the world or even blockbuster for that matter but anyway so we won a contest for that movie gallery when it opened we had to spin the wheel and it was some radio station like 106.9 or something that was there advertising for this movie gallery opening we spun the wheel we got free movies and free video games for a year <laughs> Really nice, and, dude. And what what's sad though? What's sad is that movie gallery did not do a lot of business in my small town because everybody were very cheap in this town. But <laughs> <laughs> so when we would go, I felt like I was getting like all kinds of dirty looks from like the employees because we were like <laughs> the only ones there, and we were just we were just getting our free movies or our free games. Like they would, you could get. I think you could get two at a time, and I would get. You could either get two movies at a time or you could get a game. So some weeks, like, we wouldn't get it, get anything or every five days or whatever. Some weeks we yeah. wouldn't get anything. So then I would make mom go take me up there and I'd get a game. And I'd get, like, Destroy All Humans or some PS2 or yeah, Xbox awesome. game. It was such a fun time. But anyways, I'll let you get back to your movie gallery story. All right, so <laughs> movie gallery. So where I live, you know, it's just down the road from where you live, another small mm-hmm. town. But we actually had the movie gallery first and then the fleet video moved across the street. And yeah, the rest was history because the video was, and it was ironic because when they were both open, I said ironic. I must say that a bunch. It sounds like when they were both open, we always rented movies from Fleet Video, and we try right. to do the Monday night rental because it was only a dollar. Right. If it wasn't dollar, it was only like two or three bucks for a night, you know. And they always yep. did it based off of one night. So, yep. which for a movie, for the most part, I understand because you go watch the movie, you get turned in. Well, I the video games understood though, the three day limit for movies because yeah. I was like, "Don't you're only gonna watch it one time? It's not right. like you're gonna watch it three five three or four <laughs> times." <laughs> but for movie gallery, we'd always get our games there because we pay a little extra, but we had it for five to six days and didn't have to worry about late charges or whatever it was. So, but regardless, we were in this movie gallery, and this is after having this conversation with my cousin, and we saw Final Fantasy Nine mm-hmm. on the shelf, and he was talking up this whole big thing, and at the time, and like I said. I won't get some of these dates wrong, but the PS2 couldn't have been out too long because Final Fantasy IX, if I'm not mistaken, was a very late release on PS1. And like it was being, I think, marketed kind of thing as the PS2 was coming out or something mm-hmm. along those lines. So it seemed fairly new still. So I bought Final Fantasy IX. And I was like, man, I'm going to try this. He loved that game. And I kind of understood turn base at that point. And this is a weird kind of connection too. And maybe this one kind of helped me out a little more. The main character in Nine. His name is like Zidane or Zidane or something like that. He has a tail. Just okay. like the, just like the say So like do. Dragon Ball? <laughs> yes. And I love Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z growing up. So, I'm so you're like, this guy's my healthy. this my guy's my OG. <laughs> <laughs> but also Final Fantasy IX, by the way, because it was in the PS1 era, they got all their ducks in a row. It looked gorgeous for a PS1 game. Um the CG like cutscenes at the point were like and it was really funny because for these Final Fantasy games, including even when a Final Fantasy VII came out, because it was like a big one, yeah, I guess, for the help of the PS1, make its a name, at least in North America, um, you would almost play the games to see the cutscenes, because the cutscenes were just like so much superior than anything else run on the system at that time. So uh-huh. like you would want to go through sections just to get to these cutscenes. And then Final Fantasy IX was just, like I said, their cutscenes were great, man. There's this scene, I can't remember, it's like, the cities like Alexandria or something like that. Cause it was actually more fantasy. Cause um, I mean, this is huge, you know, massive final fantasy, like tangent talks, but like seven is very, um, what is it called? Steampunk kind of error. If right. that makes any sense. Um, and then final fantasy nine was a lot more fantasy. So it was like knights and stuff. If that makes any sense. The cities were named after old stuff. Their airships were like powder powered by balloons and fans and not powered by, you know thrust engines if that makes any sense <coughs> but so I, I fell in love with Final Fantasy 9 I probably put as many hours as you could possibly imagine in that one um, it's actually probably to be honest with you my favorite Final Fantasy regardless of 7 because um, it, it was just a phenomenal game but so I was, I was playing this game me and my cousin were talking and we'd actually even during our summer vacations we'd talk on the phone while playing he'd be playing 7 I'd be playing 9 and eventually it's like hey man I want seven back, and I'll let you have nine after we kind of right. got as much. Beat it and got to as much as you. So could then I finally it. got seven, and then it's funny because seven had so many other aspects in the game that I enjoyed a lot more than I did nine. But nine, I think, like I said, just the systems and everything that worked in it, overall, still thinks a better game. But like seven, for instance, the characters were 
I just I enjoy the characters a lot more in mm-hmm. Seven. Um, and it's funny because you read all of this stuff, but like Cloud, you automatically think this dude's just straight up badass. Um, Barrett, like I said, he was kind of odd, but he's still a fun character. Aerith was, right. you know, first game crush for whatever looking strange humanoid characters on the game screen. Same thing with like Tifa. <laughs> Them spatula and, like, hands. <laughs> yeah, it was just super like well rounded cast. Um, there's also a point in Final Fantasy VII, which is very Game of Thrones esque, without kind of. Uh, I could, I think I know what you're talking about. So spoilers for Final Fantasy VII. That's when Tifa gets stabbed, right? No. Or who is it? The girl. Aerith. Who's the girl? Aerith, Aerith. or Aerith, however you want to say it, got stabbed. She gets stabbed, and like the guy, yeah. like all I remember is the guy like falls from the ceiling and then stabs through her. And what's funny is I know this, and I've never played the game before, but I know that. <laughs> well, it's so probably... apparently that's pretty iconic. <laughs> one of the most iconic things in gaming and because at that time you know you literally have her in your party for all of the first disc i guess you would say and that first disc can literally be 60 because this is going to be a whole other tangent why i love final fantasy Se- final fantasy 7 so she gets killed and right. it is one of those things where you're like holy crap it has one of the better rendered cut scenes where he's sitting there and he's like walking around at this like river pond thing which is like the earth and then like she sinks into it but mm-hmm. Long story short, with the whole story, like it's pretty connected at the end why she killed and uh, the thing that kind of happened. So it kind of it's just it's all part of the story, of course. But um, later on, like in life, as I kept playing this game and over again, there's always rumors that you could save her life. Can you? So you can't. No. Oh, okay. People somehow <laughs> they just got on message boards. People this is like do, the Tomb Raider nude uh, or whatever. Nude so <laughs> right. So on disc one, at one point when I was trying to figure out how to save her life, I actually had all of her limit breaks unlocked, which is insane because no one would in their right mind do it. Because I think at the end of disc one, I had all of my characters level 60 and you can beat that game at 75. Oh, my God. So like I had these care like they were I was just running through crap you know because you wanted to save her so bad you wanted yeah to save I the just love wanted to see life. if it was possible you know but long story <laughs> short it wasn't could, yeah it wasn't possible so I remember that, that that day so the new remake comes out and yes it's it's been you know I guess years for people actually really since the tech demo for PS3 when they actually announced the PS3 they showed a tech demo and yeah, they wrote, everybody this- was game been in development it seems like forever the game hasn't been in development that long because the tech demos everyone thought it was but that was not a thing it was just showcasing that opening scene um for and by the way dude final fantasy 7 remake if you played final fantasy 7 that five minute opening crawl i'll call it a crawl even though it's not a crawl but it does show your directors and stuff dude so it hits you. It hits you right there. Where, where you, you, I don't know how to explain it, man. But like, brings tears to your eyes almost. You're just like, I cannot believe how phenomenal this is um, to some extent. But am I um, misremembering, or did this game wasn't when it was in development? Wasn't it episodic? It is still episodic. Okay, so it's still and what happened episodic. was it? But they only announced it, I think, five years ago, actually, and they actually gave. The they were doing it in tangent with um, CyberConnect, who made Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. By the way, okay, that's a which good is game. funny because like Dragon Ball Z, yeah, like it's a pretty good game, and yeah, it's not got the triple triple A, I guess, money that no. could be put into Final no. Fantasy VII. But at the same time, like that Kakarot's battle system is pretty dang fun. Like it's pretty oh, cool. Oh yeah, yeah but compared to like this, Xenoverse and stuff, especially. <laughs> This Final Fantasy VII combat system is actually really, really good. Because I said it's very active. I do have some gripes on it because it gives you a dodge button, but you can't really dodge everything if that makes any sense. Like mm-hmm. because it is almost like an RPG. Like the hit's still going to hit. Like the hit boxes, I guess you can say, are very, very generous for the enemies. And I think the system's built up. It's built in this way because there's benches that you can rest on periodically through. I guess we're going to call them dungeons slash chapters. And it restores everything for you. So I think the game almost kind of wants you to play it in a way like Resident Evil 3 does, where it wants to deplete your resources that you have before you get to an X amount of point. So it kind of tries to, because if not, then you can just heal up, be super strong for every battle, and I'm assuming you can just plow right through the game. You know what I'm saying? So it's almost trying to create a system where when you think you're at the end, you get that last hit and you get that victory in. And then there's a bench, it's called a bench, that you can rest on right after. Hopefully there right. is. 
Um, so I think it's, you know, kind of made that way because if it was very skill input and like every dodge could actually dodge and not have generous hitboxes, I'm assuming you could probably just run all over the enemies in that game without really worrying about taking damage. Um, cause like I said, it's still very active. Like it does have some interesting and like some of the things dude, he carries like a two ton sword and an enemy yeah, will be like, at all the pictures and stuff. It'll be like giant ass sword. Uh, saving up like your enemy be saving them some kind of big attack and then you slam the sword into them and they just still doing it and you're like man you know reality that would like completely yeah. you know knock this but again it's like i said they have to have that stuff in place because it's still at the end in the roots it's still a video game but the way they realized the game realized the characters they fleshed out characters that had very little in the first one um they've added new characters some of them i don't really understand why they're in it right now or what purpose they have other than being in the game <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> they're there um, it it's been pretty surreal um like i said it's still i still have some gripes with how i think some things could have been taken care of like right now the texture work in the game and i know everybody's been saying this but yeah it could use some work i think it's because they put so much character or so much time into the characters and the combat system because the combat system's gorgeous the characters are gorgeous enemies right. are gorgeous but then you look at some of your textures and they fall pretty flat um so yeah i guess they had to concentrate on certain things here and there do you um, think that they were kind of limited because it's a remake and that's why the textures were so bad i don't think they were limited in the remake i just think when they brought it all in house they knew i think the combat system at one point they knew they had something that would drive the game through and they really do like the combat system and the way they're integrating the bosses mm -hmm. is really 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 good so like your basic combat like inter interactions with like basic enemies and stuff is still fun, um, but they can end pretty shortly. Like I said, you can run through like those little mini side quest dungeons pretty quick without really having a fret over anything. But right. then, like the the bosses, though, like for a JRPG and slash action RPG, is probably the some of the best because like you're constantly in a balance between moving between characters. Um, that's one of my complaints, by the way, too. Is there's a thing called an ATB, which is active time battle. And you have to fill these bars bars up, and then you use the bars to, and they fill up pretty quickly if you're using the character. And then you use the whatever to you if you want to access a spell or access a special ability. You use these bars. So, also another uh, crazy thing: this game, I think they took a lot of stuff from everything, including Kingdom Hearts with some of the combat. That's what I, then, is Kingdom Hearts not in the Final Fantasy universe? It is not. Final Fantasy characters were in Kingdom Hearts universe, but it's it is not. Um, but Final Fantasy IX, one of the things that was really important about that game is the equipment that you would use. That's mm -hmm. how your spells and abilities were attached to your equipment. So you would have, like, Golden Dagger. I don't remember the weapon names. But it would have, you know, Steel, for instance, as part of the ability. And you, if you battled so long with it, you learned that ability for good, if that makes any sense. So, like, right. then you could, you know, de-equip that weapon and then put a new weapon on and you'd still have that ability. It wouldn't be attached to that weapon anymore. Because during the only way to use the ability, if you didn't have it learned, was to have that weapon equipped or whatever equipment equipped. This game's the same way, which very small scale, but for the weapons that you get, they all have like a special ability. And um, if you use it for so long, you learn that special ability for your weapon, and it goes in part of your abilities kind of thing. So you'll have it, and you can switch and use whatever your weapon you want, which is really cool. Um, I really That's like cool. that part about it. But uh, the combat system, like I said, is just, like I said, we're in one of these big bosses, and this is the ATB as a small tangent there. But you have to kind of, like, constantly move to each character. And they really try to, depending on what part of you you're using, mm -hmm. create the boss to where each one of the characters has, like, a certain purpose to be used for. That's um, good. So can you still switch between your characters and stuff? Yeah, you can. And then okay. that's the thing I have to tell a lot of, like, if, I, if someone's curious about the combat system or having trouble with it is, you honestly have to because the this is the one of the grabs I have for the game. If you're not using a character, their actual ATB bar fills up slower than if you're actually using them. So if you start using Cloud, for instance, and you dive right in and you just use your regular attack, because your regular attack is kind of like the fuel that brings up their, your ATB. Right. You use this regular attack, and next thing you know what, you're going to have two bars filled up in no time, and then your other characters haven't really even have one bar filled up yet, but they were doing the same actions as you were. It's just because you're not using them, I guess, or applying agency. It doesn't fill up as fast. And maybe they're doing it because they do want you to switch, kind of like have a constant rotation. I'm not sure why they did it this way, but I think they should have 
honestly made everything feel up the same, regardless of the characters being used or not. Because um, that's kind of a gripe, you know, I kind of had yeah. this with the system. Um, but like I said, maybe it's because they want you to switch and use, because it's kind of cool, because there's a stagger as well, which has been, I think, in multiple Final Fantasy games. And then, like, the idea behind it is, like, you use Tifa. Like, right now, I have a Tifa, Cloud, and Bear in my party. Right. And Tifa and Cloud are pretty much just, are not really being tanks, but they're just running in, and they're just clobbering whatever enemy I'm playing. And because Barrett's longer range, I actually keep him in the back. And he has some high damage shots as well, but he can't do anything with melee. So, like, mm-hmm. I always use him to take out any kind of aerial because it's harder to do the... Because there's no jump buttons, but if you're, like, in a vicinity of the character, your character will jump up and use aerial attacks. But Bear, on the other hand, has a dang gun arm, so he just sits there. You can always target them and not worry about missing. So it's like a weird little play where I go to him, I make sure he's locked on one of those, I shoot them for a second, let his ATB switch over to Tifa, make sure hers is up. And then a lot of times I'll use her ability where I, I can't even think of the name right now, but it's like a focus ability. So her actual, I'll say strong attack, I won't call it that right now, her strong attack has three levels to it. And if mm-hmm. you level it all the way up, you have like these three really, really strong attacks back to back to back. So then I'll switch back to Cloud and then I'll use Cloud for again the combat stuff. And a lot of the material I have put on him, I'm using it to hopefully help stagger the enemy. So then if everything works, I guess you can say correctly, you stagger the enemy and then you switch back to Tifa. And if he used all those access, you can just sit there and deal so much damage using Tifa. It is ridiculous. And which is really cool, by the way, because like you would think like Cloud's like the strongest character, but when it comes to like physical attacks, Tifa by far it's Tifa. Is now does it matter character. which character you level up and stuff? So like it's might have like a really not strong Tifa. I'm not sure on that because I've only had Tifa and Barrett in my party. Um, gotcha. And I think they would level up because the, your weapons have levels too. And you're able to upgrade your weapons. So I think they level up without being used. So I'm assuming the characters will too. So that way you're not getting switched That's into good. a character. Yeah, um, but then they end up being shit. This is original Final Fantasy VII. That's what happened. The original yeah. Final Fantasy VII, I, when I first beat the game, I ran with three characters and three characters only. It was Sid, Cloud, and Vincent was the only three characters I ran. And they were all 99. And then my other characters were like 51. So by the end of the game, I could not use them, for instance. All right. um, di- during a different playthrough, I did I did more of a focus where I had them all kind of leveled up the same way. But regardless, this game, I think, and I'm not sure on this yet, but I'm pretty sure they level you up along with the other characters. Um, right. So that way you're not getting someone in the you're party. In the story, yeah. yeah. It's going to be just completely butthole. From my understanding, and I haven't got this far yet, but I can tell that I don't think you have any agency over your actual party. Like, the story dictates your party the whole game. Yeah, that happened with, um, in Knights of the Old Republic on the original Xbox. I used to play that all the time, and I'm playing the the MMO right now. But when I played that, there was a part of the game where you lost one of your party members, which was Bastila Sean, and... You had to use basically. You lost her, and then I think someone else you couldn't use, who was another Jedi. So I ended up having to use like my smuggler, who I never played as, and then a Jedi Ooh. who I always <laughs> used. So like I was just getting my butt handed to me because I was like a man down the entire time. Dude, that's rough. Yeah. Yeah. So that's good that that game does that. Now, do all these Final Fantasy games have the same story? No. Um, I, okay. So the only one I remember when, and this is kind of when I first got into, I mean, I've always been into gaming. I've always played games. But when I really got more, I guess, considered a hardcore person was with the PS3. And then when the PS3 rolled around, I remember Final Fantasy 13, I believe it was. Yeah. And that was the one with the pink hair girl. I don't know what her name is. But yes. Yes, it was called Final Fantasy 13 Lightning Strikes, was it not? That was... 13-2. Oh, 13-2. So I there's think. two 13s. They hit it twice. There's three 13s. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, there was a 13, one, two, and three. And it's funny. I've never beat any of Final Fantasy 13. I never beat Final Fantasy 15. Um, the modern Final Fantasies, I actually kind of fell off the train. After 10, I didn't I haven't beat a Final Fantasy since. What was so, the one where they were all in a car? That was 15. Okay. Now, but 15, these games... Are they? They're all basically their own story. Then 
Yeah, they're, they're all their okay. own story. None of them are connected, except for okay, the ones good. that are numbered that do have connected. So let me take that back. So like 13, okay, so like 13, two, and, two and three. That makes yeah, sense. they're connected. That makes sense. Um, 10 and 10, two is connected. But that like 12, 10, 13, 15 have nothing to do because um, 11 and 14 are MMOs. Um, right. But those have nothing to do with one another. Nine has nothing to do with eight or seven. And it's funny because I nine was probably one of my favorites, but I cannot for the life of me, remember the majority of that story, um, which means I need to get it on my Switch and play it again. Um, seven, I, I saw remember, that Seven was on Switch now. Yep. I, I remember the story Seven yesterday. story quite a bit still, and it's pretty interesting because Seven's story, at least Seven's remake story too, the way it starts off is in a weird way, like a snapshot of modern society to some extent. Mm-hmm. Um it is very strongly hinted at capitalism ruling the world, and uh, it doesn't matter how you, what you believe in. But yes, there's this one company called Shinra, and that company more or less is draining the Earth of its resources. And I don't know if the planet's called Earth. I can't remember in Final Fantasy VII, gotcha. but that's what that's what the motto is. Is more or less if you wanted to draw a parallel to Earth, it would be like let's say oil or fossil fuels or natural resources. Right. And it's more or less destroying the world. Um, and then you start off in a group called Avalanche and they're pretty much out there to save the world. And that's how they're doing it. They're actually a terrorist group against the Shinra giant, you know, C Corp company. And they, like I said, that's their mission is to save Earth by destroying these reactors. Um, right. Now, like I said, that's kind of like a very, at least it starts you off that way. And to some extent, it still starts off that way. The story gets extremely crazy, and I think Seven Remake still hits on it because he literally ends up. I'm not even kidding you on this. And it's pretty rough, like I said. I still remember it to some extent, but there's like an alien landed from an asteroid kind of thing. Like it, it, <laughs> it's it gets pretty. It gets pretty <laughs> crazy if that makes any sense. But uh, I don't know if the Seven Remake hits on it because the Seven Remake only goes through Midgar. So the original game Midgar was only about five hours, four to five hours. And then you got into the overworld, and that's when the game really, really like opened up. And there's all these right. other cities you go to. There's the Chocobo Farm right out of Midgar you go to, which is really cool. Chocobo. Well, in Remake, it only goes through Midgar that I know of. I don't know if people okay. haven't said anything because maybe there's a like a little embargo that maybe. So it's not episodic, then? Is that what you're saying? No, it is. It is. So it's episodic, but it's they a fleshed remake out of the full game. Yeah, they fleshed out Midgar. No, no, no. It's a, yeah, they're remaking the full game, but the Final Fantasy remake that's come out now is only through Midgar. So there's gonna be a Final oh. Fantasy remake two, probably a remake three, even gotcha. possibly a remake four. That's interesting. So they're draining yeah. everybody of their money for the well, remake. I would normally say that, but they fleshed it out so much that it's not. And some of the stuff they fleshed out, honestly, probably didn't need to be there. Mm-hmm. But the actual realization of how they've done the city is phenomenal and it makes it so much more believable it is insane like just the way because when you're playing the original game you're like oh that's cool but they really didn't like they couldn't sell it home to you because like the little area that you go to and you live into before is sector i think it's called sector seven slums in the original game it's just like a couple paths there's like three or four npcs a weapon shop material shop that's kind of all there is right Right. Right now, like it's this giant area, and you can actually look up and see the plates above you. So, like oh, the higher funny. portion of society lives on these, I guess, suspended plates above the actual ground floor, and the ground floor is kind of called the slums. And right. then, like a lot of the worker bees and a lot of like the poor society lives under there. So, in the game, it explains it to you, but in this game, it actually sells that to you. And then, gotcha. like one of your missions, you're actually like. They talk about these, which is really cool, and you don't even think about this at all. Mm-hmm. So they create these massive like UV lamps almost to create an artificial sun. So during the day, I guess they turn them on for the night. <laughs> like, but you can still see the outside world if you look to the side because it's not like a walled in. It's just suspended out to the side. But you can see the outside sun, and some of the um, plates above, I guess, are kind of going through construction or maybe something else. And you can see through them, and you can see the sky still, too. But right. then once you get to the top plates, you can actually see the sky, if that makes any sense. <laughs> but it's really cool. So it really it really sells it very well. And some of the uh, dialogue and exposition between the characters now, it's so good. Like, for instance, one of the missions I was playing on, Barrett talked about 
he referenced these plates and the way the city's built like a pizza. Mm-hmm. And it's so funny because it really is that way. I like the way the city's shaped and everything. And I was like, oh, that's pretty funny. You know, it's actually a pretty good metaphor or yeah. analogy kind of thing. Um, so tr- pr- truthfully, like, I think outside of, and I never played the original Resident Evil 2. Um, I played a little bit and never beat it though, but that remake was extremely well because I called this a remake because there's remasters and if there's a remaster, right, I think this will be a remake too, it, especially just considering the an episodic, yeah. But I personally think this is well worth sixty bucks, even for newcomers, because like I said, you're you're getting so much more for these characters now because they are fleshing them out. Um, they have because when you play the original Final Fantasy VII. And I think this is why a lot of people fell in love with that game. You you actually had to narrate yourself. Yeah. Because it was just words. And you actually probably right. ended up I hated project, like that. projecting some sense of character characterization into these characters or characters right. into these characters. Whereas this game, it does it for you. And they it seems like for somehow, some way, they hit it right on the head from when you were reading it back in the day. Like it's right. that crazy. Um and like I don't know, man, it's been like I said, so far, 10 hours in, I've loved every bit of it. Like I said, there's still some rough around the edges. There's some stuff that definitely is filler that's definitely not as strong content-wise or however you want to say it. Um, obviously, episodic, you're talking about you know, worrying about that. Resident Evil 3, which is a $60 game, it can be six hours. And this is only the first portion of this game. And yet it looks like it's going to be anywhere between 35 to 45 hours to beat. So Holy crap. The value, I believe it's going to be, it's going to be there. Um, like I haven't even met, I haven't even had Aerith in my party yet. Yeah. I'm already 10 hours in. So the, there's this huge, I didn't even met the Turks yet, which is like a special forces genre kind of sale. Like I haven't even met them yet. Like there's still so much of this game that's still left, like for me to come, like left to come. And I only know they're coming because I played the original. Right. Um, so yeah, like, dude, there is hundreds, you know, and I'm assuming cause I, one of the guys I follow on Twitter, Imran, he used to work for Game Informer. He's on kind of funny now. Yeah. He just platinum the game. And he, I think he said it took him 95 hours. Holy balls. Cause so, I think once you beat it, you get a hard mode and I'm assuming you have to beat that to get the plat. Did so, this game come out this past week, correct? Yes. April 10th. April 10th. So how do you think this game's going to do sale wise? <laughs> Oh, dude, it's going to be... Based on the coronavirus and everything? Phenomenal, dude. You think, I think so? Oh, yeah. Um, this game's got a lot of hype um, behind it. Like, I actually pre-ordered it at a GameStop because I had some gift cards left over for Christmas. Yep. And I don't even know if I can go to GameStop right now. So I actually went and pre-ordered it digitally through the PlayStation nice. Store. Because uh, I was like, I'm not missing out on this game, you know? I don't blame um, you. I got it'll sell just as much as any of the mainline Final Fantasies, and maybe even more hey, because man, if it sells if, like Animal Crossing, they'll make all yeah. kinds of money. <laughs> well, I don't know if they'll sell like Animal Crossing. Um, <laughs> that's a different story. <laughs> Nintendo is just a different kind of thing going on for them right now. But now, don't we know? I love Final Fantasy. I know we talked about it, but let's actually dive into that because, like, I've played already 30 hours of Animal Crossing. Yep. I bought Doom and Tournament and Across in the same day, and right. I only played 30 minutes of Doom. <laughs> <laughs> damn see i played i don't know how many hours i am into animal crossing i love animal crossing i visit so my island you know i haven't I, I think i've expanded my room once right now i'm paying off that first loan uh I, I haven't played much the past two days but every day before that i've gotten up on my lunch break and i played at least an hour every single day and then if i had more stuff to do by the end of the day, if I wasn't building another expansion of my island, whether it be the sisters' stores or the um, the different shops or whatever, or adding things to the museum, I, I usually can give up after that lunchtime stuff, but usually I can come back at the end of the day and just, you know, collect, collect wood, get my fruits for the day, make sure that yeah. I can sell everything, uh, try to... That reminds me, the uh, turnip lady comes on Sundays, so I'm gonna have to get yep. your. I'm gonna visit your island and check your turnip prices. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'll do that. I, I love it. I, this is my I'm first Animal Crossing. Have you played? It's animal my first crossing? Animal Crossing. Nope. And I know there's a fishing tournament going on. I'm pretty sure. I don't know what you get if you win it. But... I don't know either. I had some kid come to my island who was asking me about uh, fishes, and he made me catch three small fish in a row, and then he he paid me like. Uh, three times what i would get for it if i sold it or something like that so that was cool 
And, you know, I, yeah. I, I love the economy of the game and collecting stuff and to sell it and to expand. I also do the, uh, I don't know if you've messed around with the custom stuff a lot. Not quite yet. See, I've, I've got my kind of funny, I've got my kind of funny um, uh, varsity jacket that I wear sometimes. And I've got that <laughs> on, I've got my khaki pants on, I've got my... Uh, my black uh, Converse on. I've got my brown glasses on. So my guy is legit <laughs> me. He is me. Awesome. I've made him myself. And then I've got all these random costumes that people have made online that I've downloaded because I've, I've got like Jedi Knight robes. I've got oh, Superman costume. Cool. Yeah, it's super awesome. How did you do that? Uh, do you, so there's like a... Yeah, there's like there's a database online. I forget what the name of it is, but it's like the custom Animal Crossing New Horizons custom shop. And all you have to do is when you go into Sister's uh, Able Sisters little shop, clothing shop. You go to the back right, and you can, you can basically download any of the things that are in that database, anything oh, cool. that anybody's uploaded, and then you can. Uh, they've also got like images and stuff that you can get and post on your walls and stuff. But I haven't got anything that can hold images just yet. But dude, I love that game so much. That is like yeah, the perfect it's... quarantine game. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with you. It, you know, I only got it because, it, I guess, in some extent, like I think the Switch and Nintendo's been hitting a thousand percent with this console. Um, all the oh, first yeah. party titles have at least been baseline good. Um, and I was like, man, you know, there's a lot of people talking about these Animal Crossing games. I'm going to try it. And at first, I didn't think I was going to like it because I thought it was like. I didn't think so, too. I thought very, it was going to be very boring. Yeah. Because it sounds like tedious work. <laughs> it sounds like actual work. Well, in reality, to some extent, it. it is. But there's just, I don't know if it's the character of the game, the flavor of the game, or whatever it is. There's just something about it that, like, it's almost like that perfect carrot that's always dangling in front of you to chase. If that makes any sense. And that's, like, the whole aspect of this game. But then it if is. you wanted to, you can just take, and I can't terraform my island yet, but I know you can. Um, eventually you're able to, I think, like, create waterfalls and, like, you know, make mountains and ledges and all kinds of stuff. Right. So you can just take all that time. You can be, I'm just going to craft today. I'm going to make a cool-looking house, buy some friends over, see my house. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's a different kind of, like, I don't know how to explain it. But, yeah, dude, it's been every night, or at least almost every night, I go to bed, I at least turn it on. Now, do you um, have a lot of friends who are playing this game? Kind of, you know. Actually, I bought one for my wife, so she's playing it. Oh my god, I can um, see her getting so much yeah. into it. That's like the perfect like couple game. I swear, yeah, she's that over quite a bit. Um, <laughs> one of my other friends, his um, he bought Metal Crossing for his girlfriend. She's been enjoying it. Mm-hmm. One of my other friends, uh, it was funny because I was just talking about it because I've been playing a lot of just Xbox Live, Apex Legends, Warzone, and Rocket League a lot when my friends yeah. are on. And yeah. we were playing it the other day, and we were just talking about Animal Crossing, and he got it just because I was talking about it, and he loves it, dude. He's like, dude, this game is phenomenal. He's like, everybody's so happy. <laughs> you know, like... <laughs> <laughs> These are the best but, people uh, ever. <laughs> you know, so he, he got it, and he's enjoyed it. Um, so I've had some people come to my island and stuff, and yeah. I haven't opened it up to the public or anything like that. That's but... my favorite thing, is visiting other people's islands, seeing what they've done with their stuff, seeing how much better they are at decorating, and do it dude if you go to a girl's island holy shit they're like yeah. interior designers you go in their house and they're like it's completely <laughs> it looks like a normal house and then you go in my house and it's just a random assortment of items that i bought yep, at the that, store that's, that's exactly what my house is right now <laughs> and i actually have so every i think it's two days for the fruit to grow i believe yeah and right. from my fruit collection right now mm-hmm. it's 60 i think it was sixty three thousand dollars damn so i like every two days i'll just go and collect like i have so 63 so you can pay off you, you basically yeah. pay off tom nook that that's conniving little bitch you well, pay him off every it's every like time you expand <laughs> my loan's about five hundred thousand dollars now so, oh my or five hundred thousand bills but it gets it gets pretty wild but regardless so that's kind of the animal crossing talk which to be honest with you even though i've been playing a ton of final Fantasy seven it could change right now Animal Crossing is my game of the year. Even if I don't even play it again for the rest of the year, it's just the moments that I had with it and like 
the reset of that game compared to any other game that's in existence right now, like it just makes you feel good. Like you it know does. what I'm talking about? Like it's just it's a, a good weird... thing that you can the thing about Animal Crossing is it's not like, ooh, I beat this one enemy and now I'm basically done with the story. You get that like on a constant basis. You get that dopamine like on a constant basis. Yeah. Like, All right, I just sold thirty thousand dollars. I'm doing great. Oh look, I've got this new shirt now. That's awesome. This guy told me I was awesome and handed me a a, a recipe for an item that I don't think I've seen anyone else have. <laughs> yeah, it's it's just phenomenal. But I think you know, towards this conversation, we probably need to kind of. I don't think we want to go three hours long because we can probably have another hour on what I want to talk about now. If you're yeah. cool with this, yeah, yeah, I'm good. So I was thinking of. First of all, if you don't, what is your game of the year so far? Just out of curiosity, would it be Animal Crossing? That's a, that's a toughie. That's a toughie. I'm trying to. What what bothers me is I I forget things. Like I forget what my game of the year because I I'm not I'm like one of the person. Like last year, I think my game of the year was probably Call of Duty, if not God of War. Okay. Was God of War last year? Or that, you, God of War? Prior. Okay, God of War was that year prior. So I think last year was probably Modern Warfare for me at least. I guess, I guess Animal Crossing right now. That's yeah. the, that's the game I put the most hours and in. And the only reason why I'm saying that is because if you really look at the spectrum right now, I know I'm gonna leave some out because I would see. I would assume right now for most outlets, um, Half Life Alex is probably the game of the year. Yeah, because it got a lot of tens, and from my understanding, yeah. it's doing a little more stuff with you know VR that other games I guess haven't really done and, and that's you know the... what last year my game of the year was probably um if not Call of Duty it would have been um shoot what was the name of that game it was a VR game you played Peace as a over. secret agent nope you played as a secret agent truth blood and, and truth okay. yeah blood and truth that's close blood and truth was probably one of my game of the year that game was awesome man <laughs> holy crap you felt just like James Bond you got to hide behind walls you got to break through uh you got to hack things it was the most realistic and honestly it makes me like super excited for what you can do in vr and you know what everything i've seen about half-life alex it just looks like blood and truth to me yeah. but kind just of better quality fledged yeah like fully yeah. fledged campaign kind of yeah uh, so it's but, interesting so if we're looking at the so you got blood and truth you have yep. doom eternal you have animal yep. crossing i guess really dragon ball z kakara and then you have final fantasy and that's really kind of it for heavy hitters right now yep you're right and, and i don't know how many will actually get by the year end just because of the covid right and originally like this year was supposed to be the year of like you know heavy hitters so it is kind of interesting how like that's the only reason i was bringing that up because so hopefully we have new consoles that come out this year um and if they come out i know we're going to have a couple launch titles Mm -hmm. um so i know they've talked about it and from my understanding i don't see how they're going to miss it but halo infinite is going to come out which yep. is really odd because if you think about it we're not going to have an e3 nope um assuming they say something in june and assuming the console launches let's say in november mm -hmm. i think that's the shortest window of not knowing or seeing halo gameplay that yeah. i can think of yeah we've I mean, these only are weird seen times. like concept you know engines and stuff but we have an engine like footage but we haven't seen any actual halo gameplay at all for this one and honestly yeah. like i love some halo and that's <laughs> probably one of the few things that really really like cemented my love for games like playing with my brother split screen on right. a 20 inch two right. pv like we'd play hours and hours of this you know yeah and and that's just halo one and then that kind of evolved so it was one of my first i guess you know, jumping in periods what was of really the, where you could create maps and stuff. What was that called? It's called the Forge. The or Forge, something? but that yeah. wasn't Halo really Three. I would but... play that all the time. Create my little base, and then we'd both attack each other's base. <laughs> yeah. So saying though, like, I have you know decent history with Halo. Love the franchise, but it has to, it has to change. It needs its God of War moment. Is all I'm saying. Because if Halo Infinite comes out and it's more or less the same as Halo Five. I don't think it killed the franchise, but it's going to be pretty much close to dead, to be honest with you. Because, like, I don't know. Because right now, as you've seen, with the Call of Duty going free to play with, like, the Warzone, yep. with Fortnite out there. Yep. Um, I'm assuming, after the how, seeing how good Warzone has done, and which I'm assuming is doing pretty well, I guarantee yep. you Battlefield is probably going to do something with their next Battlefield oh, that guaranteed. way. Guaranteed. The competition with not actually buying a $60 buy-in, like, 
to me, I know it sounds crazy, but like I know Halo's got a great history with arcade shooter and stuff, and I'm not saying they need to make a battle royale, but to me, I think that development needs to focus on like what if we actually did a single player thirty hours? Let's break down the game, keep the combat, you know, somewhat similar, but yeah. Make it kind of like God of War was. Like, God of War, if you really think about it, you do progress to your combat, but you constantly got better. You unlock new abilities. You unlock new armor as you progress through the game. Like, if they can do that with Master Chief somehow, and let's say evolve in the combat, because, like, I really think they got to start focusing more towards single player, and I'm hoping this one comes out, and I hope it's not a 10-hour run of your mill you know, awesome mission. Don't do me wrong. Like some of the Halo campaigns, five was pretty weak, and I don't. You know, but I really enjoyed them. But like, I hope they come out and be like, "Hey, this is something completely new for us." You know, we're going to go. You know, thirty hours. There's going to be completely different combat segments that you didn't even think of. Like, I want to see him push Halo where it's never been. Is what I'm kind of getting to. Yeah, um, I feel like Microsoft needs more innovative games. I feel like they need more launch titles, better exclusives. Because, you know, you look at the PlayStation exclusives, usually. I mean, they, of course, there's always the um, uh, Days Gone of the Worlds where they're not getting higher praise. But usually, I still love that game. I do too. I do too. I like <laughs> that game a lot. But, I mean, usually they're in the nines and tens. For the most part, yeah. if they're a PlayStation exclusive, they're in the nines and tens, and you know, first party. Yeah, if you look at the Xbox exclusives, they're in the seven to the nine range. Yeah, I mean, already pretty high, but like I said, already. Yeah, and that, I feel like Xbox. I don't this sounds, I that sounds AAA, extremely though. weird with Xbox. The hey, um, all of PlayStation games for the yeah. first party. I'm, I say all of them. It's not true. I know majority of them are very similar yes, third person, third person action, action adventure you know with a niche within like god of war for instance had exceptional melee combat system right um days gone you know it's kind of like almost a survival traversal kind of and honestly days gone to me if they would have just done something different with the hordes as in somehow implement them very early on in gameplay yeah I think so that too. game could have been because like i was sitting there thinking about some of the game like imagine if they just had a mission where Let's say you go to a certain X town. We're gonna do. A, we're gonna they, have to do like a Days Gone, like what we want out of the sequel podcast. <laughs> like I was just thinking, like instead of having the hordes there, because they have one mission that introduces the hordes to you, and then by post game, and I mean by literally post game, because you're like two missions away from beating the game, it opens yep. up the hordes that you can take down, and yep. by taking down the hordes, you get certain unlocks, certain guns, and stuff. So like. They should have definitely implemented the hordes in earlier because that was the strongest thing I had going for that game. Yep. And even make them in the mission to where you couldn't actually take the horde down, but give us like an old crash bandicoot style running away with the horde in the background while you're trying to save someone to get to your motorcycle to escape the horde. Like, yeah, that would be, be awesome. Just make it really creative, I guess, is all I'm trying to say. Yeah. Now, I know it's a completely different tangent. And but that's, well, that's just, hard, though, for zombie games, in all honesty. Yeah, uh, but that's what I meant, like, and even like The Last of Us, the they're all very similar style games, but I think mm. it helps because they're able to, I'm assuming, talk to each studio and be like, hey, how did you do this? How do you do this? How do you do that? And they're right. seeing everything put the piece together. Because Ghost of Tsushima, it's going to be, for my under, like, I'm really excited for that game, personally. It's probably the most excited I am for any game this year. I love that setting. Um, I still think punch. it's getting delayed. Still think it's getting delayed. It, it's Yeah, it's, uh, we can talk about that in a second. But I'm just saying, like, it's going to be in the same vein. Open world, third person action game, probably have more stealth elements than other games. But right. like I said, it's still in the same vein. You don't talk about of all this, I guess, Sony produced single player, but they're expansive and they're meaty. And I think that's why they do so well. Whereas, like, you look at Xbox side mm -hmm. and you had Gears 5, which was great, by the way, great single player game, but it's very linear. You didn't really have much. And I say linear, even though it had open, you know, segments and worlds, but it really didn't have much in those, to be honest with you. Right. Um, everything was still linear, as in the path that was you were driven to. Um, and Gears, actually, 5 was probably my, so far my favorite in a long time, to be honest with you. Um, can you hear me still? Yeah, I can hear you. Uh, it's just weird. My phone was doing something weird. But... Um, <laughs> Then you have like Ori in the Blind Forest, and then you have Rare, Sea of Thieves, um, you even you have like State of Decay. You're having all these experiences from the Xbox side, right? I, way more diverse, but I don't think they're hitting tens at that, like no, you were kind of alluding no. to. And maybe if they actually 
focus or make kind of more of a concentration between all their teams, maybe they could. I mean, technically, the Outer Worlds, which, you know, is what Obsidian, like, yeah. I, yeah, that see was, I think that was the smartest decision on Microsoft's part in the past, like, two to three years was buying Obsidian. Yeah, and I've already read that like, was, Twitter that posts was, and stuff. That was the smartest decision that that company's made as From far as gaming. From my understanding, they're already, if I'm not mistaken, working on the next, like, the actual Xbox project. Yeah. From what I, not the grounded project, which is a small team, but I was reading something that said they are, I think they had three teams at Obsidian, and one of them was going to be the exclusive Xbox, you know. But regard, so as we were alluding to, though, but looking forward and with like games of the years, et cetera, et cetera, mm-hmm. I still think Cyberpunk's probably going to get it. I just think that yeah. game's going to be fun. Yeah, if it, if it comes um, out, it's going to win. Yep, you're not wrong. Well, after their, um, after their call, I'm almost 100% sure Cyberpunk's coming out because. I just don't see how they're going to miss it because they said right now they're all they're doing is play testing and bug fixes. That yep. everything's content complete. Like I said, I don't think they're going to shy away. And I honestly, please let this be true. I don't think COVID nineteen is going to be around in September like it is now. So yeah, if it let's say if it lines up for the most part and we can take a breather because from everything I've read and seen that there's going to be another second wave. They think probably next yep. winter. Yeah, but more than likely this will give enough time for them to catch back up, you know, and I don't think it's going to actually impact Cyberpunk's release. But, so we have Xbox, though, coming out in November, and this is what we come to the initial conversation, and Halo Infinite already said it's coming out, which I don't think will be game of the year right now. Who knows? No. If they completely blow our expectations, and kind of like we're alluding to, I still that think, would be great. I still think that the console <laughs> releases are going to get delayed until at least January. So I think that... Nah, man... I, I know Xbox hitting it because excellent. And this was just something I was reading the other day. Yeah. And like I said, I think Xbox and even that I sent you a post that was made in one of them forums where yeah. supposedly an insider. Yeah. It sounds man. like I mean, Xbox. that would make sense because Sony hasn't been showing their console yet. And yeah, that's why I, I think that that's going to get delayed. Like, okay, yeah, I can see Sony's. And that's what I was talking about The Last of Us too. I can see, honestly, Tsushima hitting June because yeah. that game has to be done and completed. Because you got to remember, Naughty Dog did hit Uncharted 4. And the Lost Legacy, this console generation, whereas, you know, Slugger Punch has had how long, you know, yep. to work on this game? And I can see them hitting June and making, like, right now, what if they do have a contingency saying, hey, we don't think something, we're going to be able to hit it this year. So we're going to announce PS5 as a release, let's just say February of next year, and to pacify, I know it sounds that's a weird way of saying it, but our fall game will be The Last of Us 2 in the middle of October. And it's going to yep. be the swan song, the PS5, you know, PS4 into the PS5. It's yeah. probably going to be phenomenal. If that happens, then I'm going to say Last of Us 2 and Cyberpunk. It may be Half-Life Alex because of how what it's doing for the VR community are going to be bad one for, like, that game of the year thing. Because, mm-hmm. um, but then it leaves, like, I was you know, kind of alluding to, so with Xbox, we know Halo Infinite, more than likely, if they do release. And I really think Halo and Microsoft is releasing this year. And if the, you listen to the Phil Spencer podcast, or he was on IGN, he kind of strongly alluded to not stacking the launch lineup, which right. is really smart if you have like Cyberpunk with start delivery ready to go day one. If you have the new Call of Duty the same way, if it's ready to go day one, and all these other third party, the new Assassin's Creed, because you know, what was it? If I'm not mistaken, Ubisoft said there's four games coming out this year, or within their next fiscal year. So you know they're going to have Watch Dog 3, Assassin's Creed, um, what is it, God Monsters, and probably some other one. I can't think of it right now. So there's going to be a lot that the Xbox will be like, hey, look, if you buy our, our console, you're getting an automatic 60 frames per second, 1080p for sure. Yep. But we're going to be doing 4K for the majority of these. The Xbox Series X will run all of these the best. If you already have them on your Xbox One, don't worry about it. And they may only say, but we're only going to have, let's say, three new releases for it. But yep. yet you're getting this whole catalog that's going to get this up res automatically. And I think the releases for it personally, I think, is going to be um, Halo and just Forza. That's the only two so games. Too. I think so. That, too. I um, think a, a lot of this stuff's going to get delayed until the next year. So that's what I think they're going to launch with. But when I think is the within, console launch for Xbox? It's going to be in November. I'm pretty sure they see a holiday, but I'm thinking November. See, I think I think November will get it'll launch with Halo, and I think there'll be like a launch window for Forza, and that would come out in but I think December. Forza, will actually launch with it. Do you think so? Yeah, and I think, but what you're getting at is I do think that's going to happen too. I think they're yep. going to do just like Nintendo did with the Switch, which I think yep. really helped Nintendo gain, 
you know, a lot of their fans back is they're going to do from what I'm thinking is kind of not like a staggered release, but having it set up, like, I really think the Forza, what do you call it? The horizon series. Yep. Um, the, the other team they split off, that's supposed to be making them this RPG. I assume they're probably really close to being done and ready to go. And even if they are ready to go, I think that's the one where they're going to take the breather on and be like, look guys, let's give this four months or six months more and yep. have it have its own window. And, because on his podcast, he alluded to saying that every major conference and announcement they have to make, they're going to be announcing a game for a to come out soon kind of thing, which right. I'm assuming is between 12 to 18 months, which means they're stacked right now, I think, with at least projects in the pop, pipeline. And I think next year we're going to see their co- – is it called the coalition? Not the coalition, the initiative. I think you'll see their project next year. So right. I think next year you're going to get both – I'm assuming everybody's already said this – a new fable. Yep. Um, I think the Fable game game. is definitely going to come. Yep, open world. And I think it's going to be more God of War-like. And what I mean by that is I think they're going to focus on a very innate, like, just really good combat system and take away from some of the RPG stuff. Because, like you said, they have the City now, for instance, um, that can really do the heavy RPG stuff. They have the um, Wasteland 3 team, who's, again, heavy in RPG stuff. So maybe they're like, hey, let's focus on the Fable being more of a... (sighs) action adventure style kind of game right oh we have company <laughs> all right sorry my back in and show me some old boots i got there in a few minutes when i get off this but uh um, right. oh no i'll have to get off now i'll just say whenever i get off he wanted to show me i'll just step out in a minute sorry for that okay pause. where was that you were that's my talking dog guys about, barking you were talking about uh uh, you were talking about uh, Fable and Xbox exclusives and where you think they're going to be releasing. Yeah, so again, when I was mentioning the initiative, I think Fable next year and initiative is going to be your two big stagger releases next year with mm-hmm. a bunch of those smaller stuff coming in. Because um, the team that made We Happy Few, I'm sure they're getting pretty close to having their next project you know, ready right. to go. Um, so what I'm getting at, like, so that's what I think is going to happen with Xbox. And I think they're going to use that to really push off this next console generation and hopefully getting your own Sony. Cause this is where I, the next part of it is like, I have zero idea what Sony's launching with. I think that they'll launch with last of us two. I think they'll launch with last of us two. I think, uh, but it's going to be backwards Shino. with, PS4. Yeah, I think, I think it'll be like that breath of the wild approach where it's going to be. Okay. On those. But I think, I think Sony's going to delay too. So that kind of them? changes things. You don't think the Last of Us Two is coming out this year? If they don't, no, I think console? no. I think, I think um, Last of Us Two will come out. I think the system itself is going to get delayed until next year, and I think the launch of, um, I was going to say Ghost of Tsushima, but I feel like Ghost of Tsushima will come out this year too. I was going to say that w- one of those games I think is going to launch side by side. Well, they'll both launch side by side, but. They'll both be on PS4 as well. Okay. So you'll have those, and then I think you'll probably get... I don't think Spider-Man 2 is ready yet. Well, that's the one I was actually going to say. Yeah. Because uh, everybody maybe Horizon in, Insomniac with Spider-Man 2, but you got to remember yeah. something, though. Insomniac it hasn't been out that long. has two different development studios, one in North Carolina and one in California. California. Right. I am assuming the North Carolina team, because I think the Ratchet & Clank game was their last one they made. Yep, it was. I'm, I would assume that whatever they're making is pretty close to being done in the pipeline. And I have a good yeah. feeling that it's actually going to be resistance because that of be all awesome. the hints and stuff, maybe yep. a reboot of kind of that franchise kind of thing, kind of like God of War did. Yep. So I'm actually, I know it sounds crazy and that's because I've been trying to think on the Sony one because they are a little, they're harder to peg down because everybody's been saying um, Horizon Zero Dawn. The second yeah, I think that. that'll be a launch one too. But you know what? The, corona, the coronavirus, I feel like so much stuff is going to get delayed that just yeah, aren't yeah, ready yeah. yet. True. So I do think that Horizon would probably be a launch title. I like what you're yeah. saying with the Insomniac though too. Well, no, I don't think, I was going to say, I think it's going to be Insomniac and it might be another Ratchet & Clank or it might be a Resistance, which would be really cool. And then right. I think the other launch game, personally, is going to be the Blue Point game whatever remake that is because mm-hmm. i'm pretty sure it's sony exclusive and i think that's the only two launch games you're actually going to get and then if everything's going correctly 
hopefully they have another system in play where if you have Ghost, for instance, and Last of Us 2, you get an automatically like 4K, you know, 60, whatever it is, texture pack upgrade to the PS5. You know what I'm saying? Like, hopefully yeah. they have that in play too. So you can take those old games and maybe play them in a new light, for instance, on the PS5. Because I think, again, the blue point we haven't heard much on, and we haven't heard really much on that Insomniac team. Because then I was thinking, going into the next year, and this is where I think Sony can maintain market share, assuming their console is a you know industry standard, and hopefully it's because, like I said, all the rumors about it are pretty yeah, kind of worrisome. But again, they're just rumors. But then you do have, I think, in the pipeline, in the same year, I could see Horizon sequel coming out, and they could be as early as 2021, depending on like you said, the virus and whatnot. Yep. And you could see the Spider-Man Two sequel coming out. I could, I could see that. I could see a lot more titles in Sony's launch launch window than actually launch titles. Yeah. Because it's kind of funny. Because I was thinking about the Spider-Man, and in all honesty, what do you do with Spider-Man? Because you literally, you're not going to a new environment. You don't have yeah. to worry about a new yeah, environment. Yeah, you're, you're not worried about anything. You can legit transfer that over, add a yeah. few more. Add a so few the majority more of your assets are there, you know? And the, the combat system was already great in Spider-Man. So they're exactly. going to probably, I'm assuming, they'll probably flesh it out a little bit more. I but think then, they'd flesh out the customization, maybe even add... I mean, obviously the symbiote was teased at the end of Spider-Man 1, so obviously adding the black suit, what does that do with your powers? And you can add more stuff with that. Well... I know it sounds crazy, though. Well, do you ever think there's a world where they made it co-op, drop in, drop out, and you actually have Miles Morales along with Peter Parker? Dude, I've been wanting that from the Arkham games forever. I don't know why I'm, Arkham never did it. They've got all these characters that you can play as, but they well, never true, added the oh, multiplayer. God, man. Man, like I said, we're opening up this whole launch window. Because, again, we're talking about these games coming out. Yep. And for the Sony, like, Truthfully, I think Sony right now has a better play with like third party because of how well PlayStation did. So yep. if there's going to be like a launch exclusive, I seem like they get the first bid. Um, but now with that being said, because there was a huge rumor going around that this E3, that WB was going to do its first press conference. And it was going to have the new Batman game from the Montreal team, the, the Rock Harry Potter game, game, and the Harry Potter game. Yep. Which all are seemingly going to be within, I would assume, launch window, or almost say window. And let's say, just for clarification, if anyone actually listens to this, the window has to be, I'm assuming, 12 months out from the first initial release yes, of the console. Yes, I, I, think, I think the PlayStation is going to get delayed until at least February or March. I was thinking year. February if it gets delayed. But dude, you're February. looking at, like, think about just how many insane games would be within the launch window of both just the xbox and playstation and they may be literally pushed all into like a, a you know a dense condensed area because of the covid you know what's going oh, on yeah. right now with coronavirus because you gotta think about this too man elder ring we haven't heard anything on it what is and elder that's ring the, again that's the next from software who oh, with george r, yeah, r. martin yeah, yeah, yeah. who wrote I everything on that. it so that might be a launch game this year on these new consoles for all we know yeah, like, I mean, a lot of these games are going to turn into launch titles just because yeah. they're going to get delayed so long. And if you have a lot of third party that are ready to go on new consoles and PlayStation's not there, though, that's the one thing I'm kind of worried about. Because Sony's, I mean, Microsoft's just going to eat at that point. Because regardless of what's going to happen, all the stuff that's coming out within the foreseeable future, at least the next one to two years, mm-hmm. you are looking at a um, release on both. They're going to have a, both versions for sure. Um, but the idea is like, this x version like let's just say hypothetically playstation can't be you know launched this year because of who knows whatever reasons i mean it's all yeah. speculation but microsoft does reach it you're going to have someone like from software possibly turn around and be like well maybe we want our marketing on the new console you know because it's going to run you know 100 percent of what their actual vision of that game is on the better hardware at that oh, time oh yeah yeah, yeah. PS5's that'll be the one out. that they yeah that'll be the one they showcase it on but i still think that they wouldn't they wouldn't try to cut into their margins by selling just on one console so i feel like oh no i don't think that i'm just talking about the showcasing part but yeah yeah god man there's gonna be so many games that comes out within the it's, next year. They're all it's all gonna be next year. I mean, look at the movie slate. All these movies that are getting delayed this year, they're all getting pushed to next year. Well, and if they get pushed to next year, all the movies that we were supposed to that, come out next year. We said what, what we say that. 
there's um i was reading and listening to one of the podcasts i can't remember which one it was and they were mentioning how some developers are trying to accelerate their accelerate their release right now because of oh, everything because that's going people, on because people are home and they need yeah because everyone's home you know yeah. like because i'll be honest with you i was probably in may i was super excited for cyberpunk and uh, last of us two and that was gonna be oh, dude, last day one was, purchases yep last of may. us two was my day one purchase. neither of them are coming out now so you know what i'm mm, getting nope. in may which i wasn't going to get what man eater what is that you know what that is it's <laughs> dude it's just a hungry shark game like you're <laughs> it's a shark <laughs> rpg dude and you like evolve and you go and you like it looks so good just look it oh, up oh my god I wasn't even going to get it, and now That's I'm like, rough. well, I'm getting Man Eater in uh, May. Also, there's another game from um, Square Enix comes out at the end of April called Trials of Mana, and yeah. I played the demo on Switch. I've heard of and that game. If you're a JRPG fan, make sure it's on your radar because it looks really good. It played really well, and I'm probably getting that too. And it's only fifty bucks, and Man Eater is only forty bucks. So I think you're going to get kind of like, and I think that Trials of Mana might be close closer to a triple A than it is a double A. But that right. Man Eater game, and I'm not saying any dirt on this man in your game but it's definitely a double a game i mean you're a great white shark that's evolving to be able yeah, to walk on land i can see that people. being a single a game <laughs> um but you know i'm just saying like there's a lot more room and that's why there's I a lot more stuff that people are willing I, to purchase I don't because it's it, this yeah and if sony is smart about it like i understand the last of us too and i think the last of us too probably like you said is being moved because they're probably want to do it in tangent just in case of the PS5 or something like that has bad news. Yeah. But I think Ghost, if it comes out in June, just like Days Gone came out in June, it's going to eat. I mean, it's going to eat really well. Because yeah. I think if without having a first party Sony game for a while with the way that game looks, I think people are going to flock to buy that game. And even if it's, let's say, not a top, top tier Sony game, maybe it's just slightly above what Days Gone was as in quality. I still think it's going to sell millions just because if it can hit that June release date, it's going to be out there. But personally, I think Ghost is going to be one of them nine, ten games. Like, I think it's going to be phenomenal. But I think so, too. We'll see. All right. So that is the state of gaming for whoa, 2020. Whoa, whoa. Well, what? No, what? No, we, we got we to do no, five or ten more minutes because, because we just gave all this time to Nintendo and Sony. Right. I mean, excuse me, Xbox and Sony, but we got to right. give Nintendo some love real quick. Okay, go for it. I'm just saying, what do you think Nintendo's got coming up? I mean, obviously, I don't know. For Nintendo, I'm always... I think the Mario thing's probably true. We heard the rumors that they're releasing Mario 64, um, yep. Super Mario, Mario Sunshine, Sunshine. Yep. Mario Galaxy, and then... And then 3D World. 3D World. I think 3D World's going to be that separate purchase where it's just a remaster, yep. the deluxe okay. edition like Mario Kart 8, and I think they'll release that this year. But I think that's all we're getting from Nintendo this year. See, I was going to say, I think this year is a Band-Aid year for Nintendo. Because after yep. Animal Crossing, which is a big release, I think the rest of the year, I think they'll still have one big hit in November, Yep. which may be Breath of the Wild 2, like December, November area, because... Like I said, that game kind of reminds me of Spider-Man, where the world and everything is already kind of built to it. Mm-hmm. And I think they're going to use that overworld still, and I think they're going to fill it up with a lot more other things to do, other than the Korok seeds and the shrines. Because right. I think they're going to go back to a normal dungeon system. Mm-hmm. So, And I think they're going to probably flesh out that combat even more. Because I was thinking, if they went back to a normal dungeon system per you know, item slash equipment in complete dungeon... You yep. got rid of, let's say, the physics-based stuff, or even if you keep the tablet for just overworld stuff, but then yep. you still add the whole equipment and weapon system. Like, there's going to be some things that they haven't done with Zelda for you know a long time. So, oh, yeah. like, that's pretty exciting, I think. And I think Breath, you of, think Wild that's Breath of the Wild may is come out be this next year. year? Nah, I'm no, not I think it may be this year. year. Next because, year. but the other thing I think will come out this year, even though they really haven't said anything on it, is I. I know it's been rumored for years, but I think the Metroid Prime trilogy comes out this year because Metroid Prime 4 will be announced next year with a release in 2022. I could see that being a December release. So I can I can see, like you said, the whole Mario, which is kind of like a patchwork game because it's, you know, yep. remastered. Yep. The whole Metroid Prime stuff. Other than there is a possibility they may release a 2D Metroid because that yep. was a big rumor, too. So I could see maybe the 2D, 2D Metroid and with the Metroid Prime trilogy being the releases for the fall. And then, like I said, or no, excuse me, 
Metroid Prime, let's say it comes out, the trilogy, if it comes out late summer, early fall, with the new Mario stuff being the big fall stuff, like the 3D world with the you know remasters of all that good stuff. And then let's say the new 2D would be like the actual new new release. And then next year, I think, is when you're going to see if that would happen, then you maybe Breath of the Wild 2 would be next year. Maybe a Mario yeah. Odyssey 2, maybe a Metroid Prime 4, and then the heavy hitter that no one's really thinking about. But is, <clears throat> excuse me, it's due time, and that is Mario Kart 9. Because that I team so too. hasn't done, I, from I my understanding. Fall, fall, December, next. I think December next year was, or November. December or November next year is when you'd get that Mario Kart. You get the, all that Christmas money. Bada bing, bada boom. You're the richest and company in the world. With a possibly, you know, new release of Switch on a hardware kind of upgrade uh, upgrade kind of thing. So Yeah, I think I think Breath of the Wild, if Sony moves their release back to February or March, I think a um, <laughs> Dude, if they remove their release to March, yeah. For PS5 and Horizon Zero D- to Dawn 2 is another yeah release you know and then, and then all, all of a sudden breath of wild yes and then all of a sudden like this again it's a genre bending you know everyone freaking loves that game and then well, that's gorilla the games would just be like are you kidding me right now like again yeah. <laughs> like yeah, you don't you don't want your brand nintendo you as nintendo you wouldn't want your brand to be ignored you don't want everything to um ha- you want eyes still on you so the first thing you would want to do is release your big title alongside the launch of these new systems so that you're not forgotten about yeah man it's regardless though i think for gamers even though it's dark times it's definitely probably the best time to be a gamer because with the foreseeable future within the, i would say the next one or three years it seems like we're gonna get project after project that's probably going to be really since to be honest with you since 2017 because i mean you had breath of the wild which i know you're not the biggest fan on but that game was phenomenal yeah, I mean, I like Breath of the Wild. It was insane. It's just, you know, God of it was War. A, two. It was a great launch title. Or, yeah, I said God of War too. God of War twenty eighteen, just yep. insane, phenomenal, yep. changed the I game. Twenty nineteen, really, I guess you could kind of say is an off year. I understand that there wasn't too many big year. things, but still, there was a lot of good games that came out that year. But then this yeah. year, twenty twenty, even though it's been kind of odd, but we're still getting as of right now, Doom Eternal, which people said one of the best first yep. player. Animal and Crossing, first person, uh, Animal Crossing, Final Fantasy, all those have already came out with half and then you've half got, of Alex. Um, Cyberpunk. Yep. And then this year, you still have the possibility of Last of Us 2 and Cyberpunk, Ghost of Tsushima. And you got to think the next GTA Master is going to be ready too next year. I don't know about that, man. I think we're going to be quite a bit off <laughs> to see another Grand Theft Auto. I know GTA Online makes so much. You'll just see the up GTA Online for I will PS5 tell you Xbox. <laughs> what's more than likely coming out this year because we didn't really hit on this too much. But I can almost guarantee you that Batman game comes out this year. Definitely if Rocksteady oh. is working on something DC related because they're going to want to have their own room to breathe. So it means I feel like the Bat- Batman will come out first so, you know, clean the slate and give Rocksteady more time and hopefully they come in with something extremely crazy because like I'm just thinking in my head, come September, we didn't even talk about this, by the way, this other game. It would be really cool if WB comes out and says, hey, we're releasing Batman in October three weeks after Marvel Avengers drops. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Definitely if Marvel Avengers drops in a rough state and this game's been polished for this long and hopefully it's, you know, as good as the other Arkham-based kind of games. Um, I'm saying, like, we didn't even talk about that, man. We still even have Dang Avengers coming out this year, supposedly. Yeah, you know, supposedly. Like, <laughs> there's just a lot of good there is content and crap still to come. So, well, well, I mean, Battle Royale will have its new season every two months. So, <laughs> exactly. So, you'll always have that to keep you busy, too. I think they're doing a new Call of Duty Black Ops this year. Um, that's supposed to be like a soft reboot of the franchise, from my is understanding. This, so, this, would this be Treyarch's year? I thought this was Sledgehammer's year, wasn't it? It was, but I think some crap went down. So I think uh, Treyarch kind of took over with Sledgehammer being like a main support for it. Oh, oh interesting. One thing for PlayStation, though, mm-hmm. and no one's really said anything on this. And I don't really know what studio would do it unless I was thinking Guerrilla Games. Mm-hmm. So I think if Guerrilla Games is doing two teams, for whatever reason, I, I have a feeling like, not a feeling, I, this is just kind of a preference, I think, is maybe they would take off 
kill zone for a short period of time, put it on the back burner. Yep. While letting her horizon be one of the projects. And this crazy idea, because it's been a long time, but what if they gave SOCOM to Guerrilla Games? That would be cool. And I that like maybe that. could be a launch title or at least a launch window. And they bring that series back with maybe like um and as I was thinking about this the other day, like what if they took SOCOM somehow, some way they were able to find or even get the rights to some of these actual insane stories that have been told and do it kind of in a video game, you know, esque kind of way. I know that's kind of a weird line to walk, but yeah, I mean, again, make it fiction, but kind of make it similar based off these combat and make it just a really in depth. Because, I mean, truthfully, war games, they have some good stories, but they're, they yeah. can always do a little bit better because those are some of the best stories told regardless, you know, because heroism, brave, whatever it may be. Like, those are some yeah. great stories in those kind of settings. And I don't think they've ever really had that time. I know Call of Duty is pretty good, but like I said, Call of Duty, a lot of it definitely is more Hollywood blockbuster kind of thing, whereas, yeah. like, how God of War story was told, where I felt like it was, even though it was this insane fictional world, but it seemed really at heart. Like if they did that kind of attention in the SOCOM universe, like I think you could have that would a be huge, good. huge, and then also bring back the multiplayer full swinging because people used to love SOCOM's multiplayer. Yeah, that's one of the, so, the studios that really got screwed over in the 2009 uh, was collapse Zipper? was Zipper. The, yeah, Zipper yeah. Interactive. Because I remember they made, uh, I think their last game was a Vita game, and it was a really good Vita game. It was one of the yeah, best. Yeah, that's true, but so. I think it's, uh, they got pushed on that handheld for a long time because there's a bunch Ooh. of SOCOMs on handheld. I mean, I know, that's true. Unit 13, that's that Vita game. Unit 13 was good. Unit yep. 13 was great. Vita was before its time. <laughs> <laughs> but that's besides the point. Let's go ahead and wrap things up, Keaton. So I enjoyed having you on the podcast today. We'll do more of these. If uh, you enjoyed the podcast, please rate us below, whether that be on Spotify, iTunes, whatever. Please give us a review, rate us five stars, do all that good stuff. Uh, comment below if I do a YouTube version and give us a thumbs up. That always helps. Give us a subscribe as well. Keaton, I enjoyed it. We'll do this again as soon as we get the chance to, man. Yep. Be safe. Have a good one. Hail to the yeah. Have a good one, guys. <laughs> See you.